Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of RuPaul's Drag Race, Season 10, Episode 10, Social Media Kings into Queens. Okay, so we start off after the elimination and there was no elimination this time. So we've got Cameron and Eureka who are very happy that they're still there. And Aquaria who is not so happy that they're still there. Aquarius being a little snarky, but I kind of get it. If everybody were being really honest, I think they would all have to admit that they were sorry that one of them didn't go home. Because you're already thinking to yourself, oh God, I made it to the final five. And then when neither one goes home and you're still final six, that's kind of a letdown. I think you'd be lying if you didn't think that. So I really didn't think it was too bad what she said. However, the next morning, Aquaria makes this big apology about it. I don't think she needed to. Also, I need to point out that Aquaria's little flock of seagulls hairdo is so cute. All right, then the alarm goes off and Rue comes out. And today's mini challenge is to make themselves up to look very macho for this manly body spray ad called trade this one is pretty funny because it's funny to hear all of them with what they think is like this manly voice and they're it's also stereotypical this was interesting to me it's very reminiscent of how straight men talk like a woman oh their voice is all high and like women don't talk like that but they make their voices like so exaggeratedly high this was the same thing. These guys were being so like stereotypically macho with these deep voices and oh my God, not all men, not all straight men talk like that. It was funny though. Cameron's was first. Cameron I thought would look more masculine than she did. Just probably because of the muscles and the tattoos and everything. Then Aquaria, I'm sorry, sweetie, you are just cursed with beauty. I'm not buying you as a macho man. Monet, uh, Eureka's next. <laughs> Eureka's pretty funny. Cracker, don't love it. Asia, once Asia got the voice right, I think Asia did pretty good. I'm not sure why so many of them had the impression that to be a manly, macho man, you have to look like a homeless hillbilly. I just, I don't know where that was coming from, but a lot of them had that kind of look. Okay, Eureka wins this one and she gets a $2,000 gift card. Now, Rue announces the maxi challenge and this is a makeover challenge. This time it is with these like social media celebrities that they have to do a drag look that makes them look like they are from the same family as themselves. So they have to look like either, you know, sisters, mother, daughter, that kind of, something where they look like they belong together. And the social media stars are Tyler Oakley, who I don't even know from YouTube, but I know him from Amazing Race. He's so cute. He and his partner were on Amazing Race and they were so, nice to each other and they did well and I was really rooting for them. Then there's Chester C. Don't know who that is. Kingsley. Don't know. <laughs> Anthony Padilla. Raymond Braun. And Frankie Grande. And Frankie I know from Big Brother and also because he's Ariana Grande's brother. Okay so as the winner of the mini challenge Eureka gets to pick not only who she partners with but she gets to match up everybody else. And she is taking Rue's advice that Rue gave Aquaria when Aquaria had the chance to do it, but Aquaria just let everybody pick their own thing. Eureka was purposely trying to set it up so it would be difficult for everybody else, which, you know, no shame in her game there. But I just don't know if I would have made exactly the same choices she made. She put Tyler Oakley with Monet, Chester C with Cracker. She put Kingsley with Aquaria, thinking that even though Aquaria is good with makeup, Aquaria might not do so well with someone with a darker complexion, which is stupid, I think, because if she's good with makeup, she'll be able to just blend the color, whatever color she needs, to match his skin tone. I don't think that's gonna throw her off. And not only that, 
She didn't say anything about thinking it would be difficult for Monet to do makeup on someone with a light complexion. I don't know. I didn't get that too much. She teamed up Anthony Padilla, who is adorable, with Cameron. Raymond Braun she gave to Asia, and she took Frankie Grande for herself. Now, the others seem to think that she almost sabotaged herself because Frankie Grande has such a huge personality, talks a lot, jumping around all the time, and uh, everybody else sort of thought that Frankie might be a little high maintenance, but we'll see. Right away, Asia and Raymond are hitting it off, and it looks like they're going to have a good time together. Chester C. might be difficult for Cracker. Just Chester C. is a straight man, and he's not really seen drag race very much. And also, he's got facial hair, so I don't know how it's going to happen there. Okay, Cameron's partner, Anthony Padilla, also is straight. And, oh, that's, I mean, they both seem kind of shy. So I'm a little bit worried about Cameron again. Kingsley and Aquaria, uh, it's okay, it's not great. I'm a little bit concerned about how they're relating to each other. And mostly because Kingsley's very shy, very shy. And I think maybe afraid to be in drag or wear the heels and all that. Uh, most of these guys are afraid to be in the high heels because they're not used to that. And that's the hardest thing they have to get used to. Rue comes into the workroom to talk to each of the pairs. And I just love RuPaul. I just do. She makes everybody laugh and feel comfortable and she's great. Okay, so before Rue leaves, she says that, oh, there's one more thing. You all have to do a homemade video to my song, Charisma, Uniqueness, Nerve, and Talent. Okay, now it's pretty much they're getting ready, they're getting all their makeup on and stuff in. Oh my God. Chester C., the straight guy with all the facial hair? Yeah. Be beautiful. Shaved his face. Cracker did a stunning job on his makeup and like Chester loved himself. He thought he was gorgeous. And he was. Okay, it is the main stage and Rue comes out and oh my gosh, I am so spoiled. This is only the 10th episode, but I am so spoiled that I'm looking at Rue's gown and I'm going, eh, I don't love it. <laughs> Rue is stunning. But now I'm like, get, I've got myself so spoiled with her looking like perfection that now I'm getting nitpicky. And I did, it was mostly, I just didn't love the dress this time. Okay, so who introduces the judges this week? Michelle Visage, Ross Matthews, from 13 Reasons Why, Miles Heiser, and also from Parenthood, and recording artist Lizzo. I do not know Lizzo. Okay, it is time for the snapshot looks, and we are starting off with Asia O'Hara and America O'Hara. That's Asia and Raymond Braun. Oh my gosh, they have cute names. I love the names they picked for their partners too. Next is Eureka and Eufrica, <laughs> which of course is Eureka and Frankie Grande. And that's cute. It looks like a little Eureka. Aquaria and Capricia Corn, who is Kingsley. I don't love the outfits here. I don't think they go together well enough. I don't know. Okay, Ms. Cracker and Ms. Cookie, who is Chester C. How cute are they? And such cute names. Then we have Monet Exchange and Short Change. And that's Tyler Oakley. Again, very cute. And I think it's so sweet that Monet is wearing glasses because Tyler probably can't see without his glasses. So to have them look alike, they've got the glasses on and the green dresses. Monet looks beautiful. And finally, Cameron Michaels and Kelly Michaels. And that's Anthony Padilla. And I like this. I think they're cute. Okay, the judges have deliberated. And Rue calls out, Asia, you're safe. Eureka, you're safe. Ms. Cracker, Congratulations! Yay! This is the first win for Ms. Cracker. I'm happy for her and she totally deserved it this week. 
I mean, the fact that she took that straight guy with facial hair and made him look the way she did, oh my gosh. And Cracker wins a $2,000 gift certificate to Jane Doe Latex. That's a lot of latex, $2,000. I wonder if that's where Erica got her latex blouse. And Chester got a $2,000 gift certificate also to, um, I can't remember the name of the store, but it was for like custom suits. All right, then Cameron is up for elimination. Ah, I didn't think she should be. Aquaria is safe. I personally think Cameron should have been safe and I think Aquaria should have been up this week. And I love Aquaria, but I didn't think her look was strong enough. Oh, then that means Monet is also up for elimination. Ugh, I don't like this. Cameron and Monet, but I'm pretty sure Cameron's gonna have to go home this week. Cameron was on the bubble last week and got saved, and I don't think she's gonna be able to pull that off twice. Okay, so it's Monet and Cameron, and they have to lip sync for their lives to Good As Hell by Lizzo. I guess I should have figured that one out because Lizzo is there as a guest judge, but I don't know who Lizzo is. Okay, let me just say this. This lip sync was the best so far for me, mostly because I loved that song. I loved it. And I thought both Cameron and Monet did well. So this one would be a tough call for me because I think they both did equally well in this lip sync battle. Oh, Cameron Michaels. Shantae you stay and Monet exchange sashay away oh man Monet was one of my early favorites really with Blair St. Clair Miss Cracker and Monet was always up there for me I just thought she was so sweet I liked her she was funny and very nice and I did not expect this outcome. I didn't. I don't think she was worse than Cameron. I I mean, I don't think Cameron, I don't know. I don't know, they all have to go, I get it, but. Okay, well, I'm losing one of my very favorites from the start, so this is not a good week for me. <laughs> who of the five girls who are left is the one that you would like to see win this year. I'm not sure. Miss Cracker is definitely up there for me. I, you know, I've, I've had this change of heart with Aquaria, but Aquaria may not be mature enough, if that makes sense. I think some of the things she does shows her age. So for that reason, maybe Cracker has an edge over her for me. I can't see Cameron winning this whole thing. I don't. I don't love Asia the way I think Rue Paul loves Asia. And so for that reason, I wouldn't be surprised if Asia won, but I don't feel the same way about Asia that Rue Paul does. And Eureka. I wouldn't hate Eureka winning. It's probably Cracker for me though, edging out Eureka or Aquaria. But I'd love to know what you guys think. Okay, so we are sadly saying goodbye to Monet, and she puts her lipstick message on the mirror, and, and it's very simple. Long live the sponge, MXC. And that's it for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to Jill Informed if you haven't. Please click on that bell so that you can get the notifications that let you know when I have a new video out. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to comment down below. I read all of your comments and I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, I will see you next Thursday at 1 p.m. Central for the next recap of RuPaul's Drag Race. Bye-bye.